by your princess Ilka. Recovering from the morning beatings in every single sense of the way. Episodes twice and horrible feeling. I still feel bad, super bad. I don't want to go into the wordings because I don't want to focus on it if I don't have to. I'd rather continue with the feng shui. I wish, well, someone wishes me to. Otherwise, why would I? I just talked about Adriano's house, but not much. Look, when I came to Adriano's house, it felt so cozy. A very small house. When I say Adriano's house, I mean the house where he lived with his mother and his father. Adriano Silva. And Yolanda Quijano. They had a small house up in the mountain. Another mountain in the forest. Yeah, well, there were trees. In a little, it wasn't really gated at the time, was it now? I don't remember. Yeah, it was kind of a sec section. Oh, yes, it was. Okay, good. Now, Pura Lopez Colomil lived diagonal in front. And there were more people. It was not like large. But in, they lived in that little place and it was so quiet. Yeah, it was like colder. The Buddha would run around in, with sweaters and, and pants. Yeah, and that was like five or ten minutes up from Cuernavaca, in Cuernavaca. I liked the place so very much, always. Yeah, the climate changed impressively, driving up, let's say 10 minutes uh, driving up. That was almost the end of the street. Almost, but then again it wasn't. Because it went all the way to Chalma, which is some peregrination place. All, all the people I knew in Cuernavaca moved into that very road. Not the gated community in the forest, but before. All the people I knew moved right in there. And that is exactly also where that one apartment was, which a leak rented very briefly many years before. Yeah, he said for, for me. <laughs> I was there once and never again. So, what? <laughs> He was looking for an apartment for, for Licenciado Limon. And he asked me to accompany him. I don't really want to talk about it. You want me to talk about that? And then he, we looked at apartments. Yeah, in his work day. Why not? I accompanied him because he asked me to. Yeah, that's when, it's the time I got to drive his wife's car. Yeah, he came not with that dumb little white Datsun every government official has. But he came with this blue topaz. Was it a topaz? Yeah, it was comfortable. I think I drove it. Because he's old. <laughs> he said, you could be a great gentleman, Zilke. <laughs> I think I opened the door for him. Can you believe me? Yeah, because now I was the driver. I don't mind, I like driving. Hence, I have a little bit of experience with different cars, but driving it like once or twice. So he found this apartment and he said, oh my God, this one, I keep it for myself. And then he asked me to go and let's, let's buy some things for the apartment. I don't know, maybe utensils, maybe bed sheets, something. 
just to the, you know, I don't really know, it was so simple. I only remember the little store in the entrance. What could we have gotten there? Not much of a dedication of love. And then he gave me the keys. Go there on the weekend and enjoy. I was still living in Mexico City. That must, must have been the weekend where he actually came and joined me. Or maybe it was another one, I don't know. I don't remember. But he came once. And now we had been traveling together and, you know, eating lunch together. And I sent him off. <laughs> When it was time to sleep, there was a bedroom upstairs and one downstairs. So I sent him downstairs. And he was... He was... Um, yeah, what was he now? <laughs> His delusion ended. Because there were no need. Yes, we did. We had shared a, a bedroom when he was on trips. Because I thought it was maybe cheaper or easier. But only that. There is two bedrooms. There's no need to share because we have we don't share anything. He sleeps on one side of the room and I sleep on the other side of the room. And now there's two rooms. He was very upset. Like renting an apartment would give him entrance to my intimate. Is he shit? Full of shit, the asshole? He was very upset, actually, in front of my eyes and walked down the stairs. Oof. And then he said, that's it. <laughs> And no, not anymore. And they returned their apartment. Whatever, it's fine. I don't know why he wanted it to be in, but yeah, well, now we know, right? It was just, was it a house? Maybe in a little um, privada, in a little, there was a swimming pool and around the swimming pool was a, were a few other houses. I went once, I sat there. I was in that very street, like I said, it's a little cooler than usually in Cronavaca. I was very lonely and also felt like invaded. Nothing, nobody was there, but just the fact that anybody could come out and from other houses. I, I'm very private. I see what an idiot he is. What an asshole, because he wants to make a house with me, but only for the weekends. Could he have at least asked what I like? <laughs> or if, if that would not, not have been the, the case, that's the apartment. Which, of course, I would have denied. Because it wasn't cool. How about nice things? For the place. Isn't that a woman's delight? But no, he wasn't up for that either. Cheap, quick. I don't know. I think he was a little bit derailed in his brains. So that was done. But back to Adriano. No, that was later. I met Adriano later. Okay, so in that very street, actually Lori lived maybe in the same region as that apartment was. And then El Dragon de Jara made itself also in that very side where Lori lived. And then Erika Jesus moved up there from the other side of of Cuernavaca. And then Angelina was there too. And on and on. And well, Buddha had always been living there and Adriano too. But these people, I, it, does, it all came later. In the beginning, it was just that. And Adriano invited me to his house. Yeah, after I had met them at the foundation, him and his mother. They came to, in the very beginning, as I initiated the foundation, to a French film festival. That's how I met them. So, like, like I said, I walk into his house and it felt so cozy. It was very small. As I, as I showed you in the picture earlier, in the previous video to this one, you enter and there is the living room. And the living room barely fits a couch and a table. And the entire wall, I mean, all the walls are full with paintings. There's no more space for no painting. It's almost overwhelming, but it's not. It was kind of cozy. It wasn't modern, but it was just nothing. It was just a simple seating accommodation and the paintings. And very clean and very neat because there was a maid now. And then in front, the dining room, and I don't, I don't know, Adriano's father's room, which I got to know later, was very small. And the kitchen was minuscule, minuscule, and dark, but it was, I think there was a tree in front, because it was kind of cozy too. And then there was a very tiny, tiny, tiny hallway, you can barely fit. 
And then there was Adriana's studio and Adriana's bedroom and um, Yolanda's bedroom. No, I, I got to see them all. But what I'm saying is that this tiny house was so cozy. So cozy. The entire thing. I, I cried inside because I wanted to have a family. I was very lonely. And very sad in a way. And there was a family and they had a home and they had food and they had... Not that I ate there. Yeah, once I ate there. Quiero un huevito, he said. Yeah, in the morning he offered me some breakfast. He asked me if I wanted to have a little egg. Yeah, matching the kitchen, which is small. Because it makes you no one has just one egg. <laughs> so it's interesting. Adriano was kind of a frugal person in every single sense. So, but that terrain it had a it had a garden. Yeah, not large, but not medium sized. But it was not comfortable because it was cold. No one wants to spend time there. And it was inclined. It could for sitting on like on a little cliff side, right? And this swimming pool, well, some gardener took care of that. But it was too cold for me even to consider to swim there. I mean, usually I would be asking, but no. But then on one side of the house, Adriano Papa had his studio. Yeah, pretty, pretty large, I'd say, with large, large windows. He would paint there every day or sculpt. And on the other side of the house, there was Yolanda's studio. And that was a small house and was very dark. But on one canvas, there was one painting. Who's to know that she never used the studio? It felt like it. In fact, no one was there. No one would ever be there. I could clearly see it. Because she spent her time going to social gatherings. I don't know, to get approval from people. Be very loud and, and, and tackle her son with her at all times. Remember? I met them at, in, the, in La Fundación and the Foundation in a film festival. I could clearly see that she wasn't painting, but then again, it doesn't... Well, it doesn't strike me because she was more like into the social. She was old and maybe she paints from time to never. Maybe she already did all the paintings she wanted. Because in the living room, and that is my point, there, you could see all the paintings on the wall. Not Adriano, Papa's. Yolanda's. But they were not Yolanda's or mine. I did not take the time to look at them in detail because there were so many of them. Yet, you see, when I go to, you know, for, for, for my sweet people and my dear people who listen to the Atacolacho, who listen to my feng shui a few, what is that, weeks or two months ago, when I talk about Robin's house, the other day I talked about feng shui and about homes on my iPad. I go to Robin's house, it's new, it's in a cool place because it was a gated community which was fresh and new and you couldn't see electricity lines out, uh, outside, they were underground. That alone was like a, a huge plus. So you go to Robin's house with a large cupola and yeah, warm mirror and swimming pool, usable and all that. It didn't feel cozy. And then the exuberant large stairs and that dome entrance to her upper part to the upstairs, which was like three stories up to walk. It was aesthetically not viable. From an architectonical standpoint, it was completely outrageous. And think about poor Robin men with two little infants walking up and down the stairs. Man, carrying the babies. No, she did not have an elevator. That house was large and new, and it wasn't cozy. Get my point? I never felt like, oh, that's so pretty, I like to be here. There must have been an angel by my side.